Yeah, this is a neat little game. Wonder what the reviews are saying about it. Wait a second. Instead of basing my opinion on what someone else thinks of this game, maybe I should just make a review of my own. Yeah. That doesn't sound like a stupid idea at all. But I'm gonna have to get started. I'm gonna need some paper. It's good thinking, brain. That's not it. No, that's not it either. What is that? No, that's not it. Okay, yeah, there it is. Good, now we can finally get to work. Hey, do you enjoy the challenge of a game like Dark Souls but you lack the required depth perception? Well then you, my Cyclops friend, need to meet Rogue Legacy. It's a 2D side-scrolling action platformer with a few roguelike elements and a difficulty curve that's going to send you into a shame spiral if you aren't prepared. Seriously, this game is hard, but not in the, uh, this is unfair, or I'm not crying sort of way. No, this game is hard, but it's very fair. None of the hundreds of handfuls of times that I died in this game felt cheap. Every single screw-up felt like it was my fault. Just like everything else in my life. This channel will now be called Sad Sack Gamer. The one thing in this game that you can make the case for being unfair are these flying enemy types that just, they always stay in the walls and on the floor and they can't just, just get over here. The gameplay found here is so smooth. Everything is so fast and fluent. And the only time my frames per second ever dropped was when my characters had the nostalgic, nearsighted, or farsighted traits. Whether that's something with the programming or if it's something having to do with my mid-range gaming laptop, I'm not sure. Being a roguelike, or a rogue light, as the developers put it, each time you start a new legacy or select a new heir, the castle layout's gonna change. Well, not entirely. The layout of the rooms themselves will change, but where each section of the map is located will remain the same. The forest will always be to the east, the tower will always be up, and the dungeon will always be down. Even though these rooms are procedurally generated, after a while you will begin to notice rooms being repeated. And sometimes two of the exact same room design will be connected to one another. Now it's rare to see that happen, but it's really easy to notice when it does. <coughs> What's that? You want more randomized stuff? Okay, how about this? How about randomizing your character? Rogue Legacy has eight different classes available to you, with a ninth one that I didn't know about until I replayed the game. So I guess it means that there's nine in total. Probably should have just said that in the first place. These classes include the Barbarian, a walking tank, the Knight, who's your middle of the road guy, and the Mage, which is exactly what you think it is. Also available, once you unlock them, are the Spell Thief, the Lich, the Knave, the Shinobi, the Miner, and the Dragon. That's right, Dragon is a playable class, but hold on just a second. Pump the brakes on your hype train there, Junior, because for all the gold it takes to unlock this class and all the time you're going to spend getting to that point, Dragon class is pretty underwhelming. Sure, being a Dragon is great for the first run or two, but the novelty wears off very quickly. When you play as a Dragon, you can't jump. Your jump instead activates and deactivates your flight. You also don't have a standard sword attack. All you can do is spit these fireballs that don't have very good range. It feels different from every other class, but in a bad way. Now this may have been an intentional design choice from the developers, but either way, I suggest spending your gold on something else. For instance, why not upgrade one of your other classes and boost it to a more powerful version? Does Knave sound like too weird of a name? Upgrade it and become the assassin. Playing as a knight a little too meh for your taste? Well then upgrade it to the paladin and become three times as meh. Plus, there is a ridiculous amount of character traits that get thrown into the mix as well. So you might roll a hyperactive mage with irritable bowel syndrome, 
Or you might have a colorblind assassin, or a spelunker with gigantism, or a nearsighted barbarian with coprolalia, or even a... You get the idea. The possibilities are almost endless. All that excitement aside, I still found myself using just one or two class types whenever I could, and only using the spelunker when I needed some serious coin. Well, come on game, that was rude, I was talking. Okay, I guess I'll just move on then. You're gonna be doing a lot of stabby, slashy, burny stuff to all these enemies, so there may as well be some context to it all. Right? The story is told through the opening cutscene and 25 journal entries, and a little bit by your own imagination. Now it has my primitive brain in a bit of a twist, but I'll take a stab at summarizing it. Get it? Stab? Cause of the- it, never mind. The king has been attacked by an assassin and has sent his son, Johannes, and his siblings to Castle Hampson to save him. Johannes is determined to be the first one there to save his father so he can finally gain his respect and claim a hefty inheritance. When he arrives, Sharon, Charon? I don't know, is there guarding the front gate. Johannes is forced to give Charon, Sharon? I don't know, all of his money to be allowed to enter. He starts his journey in the castle, writing each new experience down in a journal. He makes notes of the different areas and enemies. He even mentions how each dead adventurer's map has a different layout than his own. After slaying the four boss creatures and unlocking the door in the main hall, Johannes comes to a large room, in which he sees the Fountain of Youth. And there, with full goblet in hand, is his father, the King. Johannes knew then that the King was now immortal. There would be no heir, no inheritance, his family and the families of all who entered Castle Hampson were ruined. He then murders the king in cold blood. How does he do that exactly? He's immortal. Johannes then sits at the Fountain of Youth, awaiting the next adventurer to come along. It's an interesting story to tell, especially in a game that doesn't favor things like character development or a traditional three-act story. I just wanted to add that this introduction or tutorial, the ending of it in particular, is one of my favorite parts of the game. The fact that it has you complete Johannes' story by killing the king was a pretty nice touch. What, really? I died again? Probably shouldn't be dying this much during the review. That's, uh, that's my bad. Well, no, actually, showing deaths is just fine. After all, dying is a huge part of Rogue Legacy. In fact, I'd say it's one of the most important parts. You can't level up without doing it, and it would be impossible to beat this game in a single run. Now if you possess the skill that I know you have inside you, then the castle and forest shouldn't give you too much trouble. Eventually you'll find yourself just running through these low-level enemies like I have no time for the likes of you. The tower, however, moves the difficulty bar from here to here. Do you still see the bar? No! Because it's off the damn charts. This area gave me so much trouble, it took me the longest to complete, especially the boss here, Ponce de Leon. His fight was the only one to make me rage quit. As you run around, dodging his charging attack, you also have to maneuver around his trail of fireballs. Not too bad, right? Well, on top of that, you have to watch out for what feels like a million floating spike balls. Those things pose more of an actual threat than the boss. I feel as though they could have given Ponce a second attack in addition to his charge and completely cut out the fire trail. Then, to me at least, it would have felt like an actual boss fight as opposed to fighting a supersized normal enemy just surrounded by hazards. After you take down Mr. De Leon, it's time to head to the dungeon, the Land of Darkness. After that difficulty spike in the tower, what I found down here felt like a cakewalk in comparison. Even the boss down here is relatively easy to beat. It's just a giant version of the blob enemies you already faced. It has no real attack other than jumping at you, but it does spawn a pillar shooting ghost demon thing when you split a piece of it in half. Still though, that doesn't add much to the challenge. Once that's done, you head back to the main hall and from there, you walk through those large golden doors. Once inside, you find Johannes. Then there's some talking, and it's final boss time! Hey, good job, you beat him! But, oh no, what's this? Yeah, it's not over, here comes the fountain! 
Okay, all fanfare and hype aside, yes, these two bosses are tough as hell, but you should be good enough at this game by this point to need no more than a handful of attempts to beat them. Okay, I was fine with showing those first two deaths, but that one was just uncalled for. I'm gonna have to ask you to stop, just, just stop. There's enough content in Rogue Legacy to keep things fresh for a long time. Seriously, a long time. My first playthrough took me 17 hours. That's roughly the same amount of time it took me to complete The Last of Us. The best part is, it never felt like it overstayed its welcome. Even when my original footage was rendered unusable and I had to play through the game again from square one. Thankfully, my big, strong muscle memory remained intact from the first time, and I was able to complete the game at a much quicker pace. Persistence is the key here. Even when you have a string of bad runs one after another, and all you want to do is lie on the floor and think about where you went wrong in your life, you have to pick yourself back up, grab that controller, and give it just one more shot. Sooner or later, you'll find yourself watching the credits roll, and you'll feel the warm, loving embrace of happiness envelop you. You'll wipe a tear from your eye as the title screen comes back and... Is that New Game Plus? <laughs> Rogue Legacy will crush your spirit, break your will, beat you down, spit in your eye, and drag you through the mud but you're gonna love every minute of it. The amount of content and the randomized nature of the game means it'll be fresh for a long time. And the gameplay is so smooth, it's like a hot sword cutting through a zombie. Not to mention the pleasing visual style and the absolutely awesome music. But once I found one or two classes that I really liked, I really didn't want to play as anything else. And I also feel like the four castle bosses could have been more than they were. I give Rogue Legacy a score of, let's see, about 15 hyperactive paladins out of a possible 16 mages with dementia. And yeah, that sounds good. That's a, that's a reasonable score. Hi there. I see you've made it to my end card. Congratulations, you've completed your quest. Thank you for watching. And if you don't mind, I've got another quest for you. It involves clicking one of these boxes down here. This one will take you to the Skip to Game channel where you can see other videos I've thrown together. And this one will take you to a channel called Dumpster Gameplay. That's where my buddy and I, you know, we, we play games and we, you know, make jokes and stuff.